Hello again, and welcome to Pearl Magazine. The World Health Organization says children and teenagers need at least one hour of physical activity every day. But in Hong Kong these days, any physical activity for any length of time is a tall order. Pearl Magazine's Tina Jang met with students, teachers, and experts to find out how thinking outside the box can help young people stay active. At this secondary school in Pak Fu Lam, classes have finished, but students are now learning a new game. The sport of Kabaddi is a history of 4,000 years and originated in India. It's popular in many different South Asian countries, Pakistan, India, Nepal, and even Sri Lanka. Since the 90s, it has become an Asian Olympics game. Teacher Lo Ya Kuang is a big fan of Kabaddi, and he plays it with his students often. The rules are simple. Seven players in each team, taking turns to attack and defend. Every time the attacker touches the defender, he gets one point. He can get seven points after touching seven players at a time. The defending side needs to stop a player from returning the middle line. If he successfully stops him, the attacker is out of the game. A game is about 15 minutes each half, and the team with the most points wins. The game is proving popular with the students, especially among those with international backgrounds. I'm Anvi. I'm Harmin. We are from in India. They both played kabaddi back in their hometown when they were young. I was playing football in Hong Kong, but I leave it because I like to play kabaddi. We are talking to each other. Kabaddi is the best game. Then we start playing this game. When kabaddi was introduced to the school earlier this year, they were thrilled. I came to secondary, and then Mr. Lo, when he introduced kabaddi, I was like shocked. Like Hong Kong also have kabaddi. So then I got curiosity, and then asked him, "Can I join?" And then, and now I'm here. Now it's my favorite sport. They're eager to teach other students how to play. I feel proud of my nation. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really a good thing when somebody plays a game from your country. I also play other countries' games like football, basketball. I'm studying in Hong Kong and then uh, during the lesson time, Chinese uh, lesson time, we learn about many different uh, festivals. So I do prefer like they also know about our festivals. Our culture. Yeah. Lo, who was an anthropology major in university, introduced Kabaddi to the school. Ethnic minority teenagers are happy because they've been living in Hong Kong for so long. And they could just learn Chinese culture. Seeing that Hong Kong people appreciate them and like to learn the hometown culture, they'll be more confident. Government figures show there were more than 580,000 ethnic minority people living in Hong Kong in 2016, about 8% of the population. That's an increase of about 70% from 2006. One of the biggest ethnic groups is South Asians. We can tell from the numbers that the population of South Asians is increasing. Although discrimination in Hong Kong is not very serious, we feel that everyone is in a parallel universe. And we all have our own lives. I feel that through sports, we can bond with everyone. Ao Hui Kin is the principal of this school. He's been an educator for 15 years. Around half of the ethnic minority students is from the South Asia. How to promote their hometown culture? I think Kabaddi should be one of the media. The school has recently introduced some new games for the students to play. Newly emerged sports is representing the different cultures. And our school is a multicultural school. Half of our students are from different countries. More than 15 countries are there just like uh, Britain, France, Germany, and also Philippines and India, etc. We'd like to provide more opportunities and also to let them know the culture of different countries. Not just the sports and also their food and their living style. Apart from Kabaddi, the school is offering other new games. Tech ball, for example, originated in Hungary. It's a football-based sport played on a curved table. Hong Kong now has roughly 100 players. Oliver Miles is one of them. I started playing it years ago. I used to play foot volley, uh, and there's a lot of crossover in the sport. So it used to be used as a training tool in foot volley, and then a couple of guys 
from Hungary turned it into a, into a sport. Uh, and since it's been turned into a sport, the physical side of it is difficult. The technical side of it is difficult, so it's quite challenging. Uh, but it's also super fun as well. 1v1 or 2v2 is great. The sport follows a points-based scoring format. Each set is played until a player or team reaches 12 points. It allows a maximum of three touches by any body part, except for the hands and arms, before returning the ball to the opponent. No physical contact is allowed between players or with the table. Uh, so as long as it's accessible and fun, that's the, that's the main thing. And with tech ball, it is. You can do some games, you can do some drills. The first time that you ever play it, and you'll see your progression levels go up, and straight away you're having that fun, and you've got that uh, tech ball addiction. Nice, nice. Good job. Oh yeah. Today, Oliver is visiting the school. And try and get as many young people in the, involved in the sport as well. For tech ball is a long-term aim to, to not just have a big pool of people playing, but to be competitive at it, uh, certainly at a continental level. Since it was created in 2012, the sport has quickly gained global popularity. Since then, they've been making quite ambitious and progressive moves around the world, not just in Europe, to grow the sport. So it's now on the radar of the Olympic Committee of Asia, and hopefully it's going to be at the beach games when that takes place eventually. Uh, it's also been announced in Europe that it's going to be part of the uh, European Games in the next uh, cycle of that, which is in 2023. Wait. Kennedy introduced tech ball to Hong Kong last year. These days, he's trying to introduce more new sports to local schools. Participation in traditional sports is not as good as we had hoped. Students who play well are already members of the school team. It's estimated that 20% of students are on the school team. And then the other 80% have no motivation to play any sports. How can we make all students like sports? Kennedy has been a PE teacher for 12 years. He thinks these games can help students stay active. Once, when I was teaching Dodge B, I asked the class to take a break, someone to play basketball or football. But those who would usually sit there, drinking water and chatting, didn't rest that time. They continued to throw a frisbee, and I would tell they were happy. I realized that this is what the student need, a sense of success. Kennedy says the traditional sports that he usually teaches, like football, basketball or table tennis, are not suitable for all students. Many students have never tried to play football in their entire secondary school life, and some have never tried to score a three-pointer. By newly emerged sports, it would be easier. You kick the ball, it lands on the table. You throw a frisbee and catch it. You would be happy. For more than 20 years, Professor Cindy Sitt has been researching physical activity and exercise science. She says some students can't get a sense of success in traditional sports. We noticed that as some of them do pretty well, and they get more training, and teachers are able to identify the talents to get them trained further. But many students may be a little bit frustrated in the way that they may find uh, the traditional was a little bit challenging. So in other words, they may be left out, or even they don't want to play sports anymore. The World Health Organization says children and adolescents between 5 and 17 years old should have an average of 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity every day. However, SIT's research indicates that in Hong Kong, less than 50 percent of young people are getting the minimum recommended activity. I think any sports, um, regardless of traditional sports or nearly emerged sports, have their values. Uh, such as friendship, uh, equality, perseverance, and so on. They are complementary to each other. Uh, they serve different segments of populations. Having a wider range of sports in the way that is good because they can try different types of sports and see what sports suit their needs, their interests, meet their abilities and skill levels. After all, the aim is to get everyone active. Nearly amateur sports have the advantages that 
and it, they require uh, lower uh, skill levels, uh, lower intense activities, and lower risk of injury. And also, in general, Hong Kong people, including children, are not physically active anyway. And so we can make use of different types of sports to develop an active lifestyle in the long run. After the break, extra creative, extracurricular activities. Stay with us. Welcome back. When it comes to sport, some of the most popular games that might come to mind are basketball, football, or baseball. In recent years, however, some newer creative sports are gaining popularity with people from different walks of life. Most of the games are still rather obscure, that there is a sense that some of the sports could one day become Olympic caliber. Tina Jang talked to some of the new sport creators and players to learn more about the ups and downs of promoting new games. My name is Chan Yun Hua. Usually people call me Grandma Yun Hua. 70 year old Yun Hua is a sports fan. I've been playing floor curling for over a year. Before this, I was into water sports like sailing, rowing, dragon boat racing, kayaking, and diving. But now I'm in love with floor curling. Chan says floor curling is popular among seniors because it's easy to play. The most attractive feature of the sport is that everyone can join. I can take my grandchildren, my daughters, and even my parents, if they were still here, to participate. Last time I partnered with a friend who's 85. We teamed up to compete. Okay, okay. 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 The youngest players in fall curling is seven months old. Oh, the senior players in fall curling is 103. You can start at age six, you can try at 24, and you can try at 50, and you can try 103. No problem, because we are inclusive. Oh, okay, Dan. There's even a Hong Kong Floor Curling Association. John Lee is the president. We start in 2014, which is the Winter Olympic in Sochi, Russia. In the same year, in October, we introduced four curling in Hong Kong, which I borrowed the rocks from UK, and uh, just want to introduce how the curling scores. But uh, in the later stage, uh, we actually developed it into a new sport, and which we have our own rules, and we have our own competing system. Originated as a springboard to the Winter Olympic sport of curling, Lee says floor curling has transformed into an integrated team sport for all ages and abilities. For those people who are on wheelchair, they can hardly use their hands to push the rock out on the ground. So we create the uh, pusher for them so that their arms can be extended and hold the rock and then push it out so that they can compete with, easily compete with other people. And for those who have weak arms, they can use a slider. They can sit down, hold the rock, release it, and then let the rock slide down. This is a gentle game suitable for us with disabilities. It's inclusive. We can play with non-disabled people. We can compete together. Wang Ho Tong started playing the game eight months ago. Before that, he competed in wheelchair racing. Now, he's a floor curling instructor. Why do I like floor curling so much? It's a fun game. It demands strategies, intelligence, strength and teamwork. It increases my confidence. Even though I have some limitations, I can still teach others to play. Similar to curling on ice, floor curling involves two teams. 
Each team has three players. Each team member delivers two rocks for each end. Upon completing an end, the team with the rock closest to the center of the house wins the game. But the difference is floor curling can be played on any flat and smooth surface that fits a floor curling lane. It is a, a kind of a cooperation game because it is played in a team of three. You need to have a lot of strategies rather than physically you need to be strong. And, uh, and also a lot of skills like the delivery skills and also uh, how to control your weight and also the line control. Uh, so it is a combination of cooperation, uh, mind tactics and also the uh, skills. Mulkey is another newer game that requires less physical strength and is more suitable for everyone, regardless of age and ability. I'm a social worker and I've been introducing this game to different elderly centers and schools. It's easy to learn and people are interested in it. I try to teach some seniors, and after playing for two to three hours, I wouldn't be surprised if they can catch up with me. Wan Hei has been playing Mulkey since 2018. He's won some local matches. Mulkey is a combination of darts and bowling. Player toss the flowing pin to get points. The first player to reach exactly 50 points wins the game. We have 12 shorter wooden pins. They have different numbers. Knocking over one pin scores the number of points marked on the pin. Knocking two or more pins scores the number of pins knocked over. One Hay figures Hong Kong now has more than 200 multi players and coaches. It was originally a game designed by the Finnish company. Since 1996, it was gradually developed into a sport and was introduced to Hong Kong in 2017 or 2018. Most international competitions were held in Finland, but in recent years, some were organized in France or other European countries. In Asia, Japan and Hong Kong are two of the major players. Andy Zay has been doing sports research for more than six years. He agrees that many emerging sports have potential. There are quite a number of organizations being established recently, and this is a very well good evidence to show that Hong Kong uh, will have a certain need for these uh, newly emerged sports. They are actually gaining popularity. But opportunities rarely come without challenges. There are too many choices nowadays for the clients, where they tend to look uh, for those exciting and fun things. There is only one biscuit for too many people. So definitely in the market, there will be some challenges for some organizations, especially in Hong Kong. So they always compete for, for example, the spaces and uh, the facilities. Over the past few years, John Lee has worked to introduce his floor curling game to the public. He says in Hong Kong, old habits die hard. When we introduce to other uh, centers, schools, and also they have hesitation, especially it is a new sport. They have other sports. They are, they are running already. So uh, it, it takes quite a long time for us to, uh, to persuade uh, the principals and also the center managers uh, to try this sport. Lee remembers when he first introduced floor curling to a local primary school. The principal said, oh, we have a lot of people who are not very good in sport. And then you can try if they like the, your sport then. Uh, so I have the 6A which is, I mean, uh, study is good, but no time for sports. And I said, why not you, I mean, the students can compete with the teachers and principals, and then they try one end. Finally, yes, the student win. Student beat the teachers. The next day, Lee got a phone call. The principal called me. I want to buy four sets of this equipment for my students. So this is the beginning, it really 
motivate me really to develop this sport for other people in, in Hong Kong. Lee says more than 1,200 players and 400 instructors now belong to the Floor Curling Association in Hong Kong. The game has also been introduced to different countries and regions overseas. We still have to uh, work really hard and we can have income like from the uh, running courses, selling equipments so that we can uh, operate. Flora Curling is not yet recognized by the Sports Federation and Olympic Committee of Hong Kong. That means no government funding. Lee says all new sports have to operate on their own in the first seven years before they become eligible to become a member. For those who already developed this sport, they can have a lot of channels to have financial support, like sponsorship. For the new sport, how can we attract people to come and play? if we charge them, you know, they have choice. Why I play to fall curling to play, and then we don't have to play in playing football. If we can be treated fairly, then we will have our resources. If not, the resources will only go to a few. Despite the challenges, Lee remains hopeful. We are talking about Olympic already. Many years ago, Olympic only have the elite sports. And then later on, the German doctor, he introduced sport for the handicapped. And then they joined the Olympic family. And I hope one day, the integrated sport from Hong Kong, we can be the third leg of the Olympic. We don't count on ages, we don't count on genders, we don't count on abilities. And all kinds of people can compete in the same competition. If this can be done, then we will have a more harmonious society because we can really bring people together. That's our show for this week. Join us again on Pearl Magazine next week. Bye for now.